to our worship service this day. Uh, a few announcements before we begin. The District Prayer Challenge, Washington District Prayer Challenge has begun. I, I pray that you remember those who have signed up. I have registered you with the district. That you remember what you have chosen to lift up in prayer and that you do it each day. If you would like to, to join us, there's still time. Rag and Muffin, uh, we will not meet tomorrow, but they will meet on the 18th. We're going to give a couple weeks after holiday for everything to settle down. So January 18th at 1.30 at the church house. Calendars from Gilbert's back are still back there. Um, please take one home. So, and if you ever see... Any of the Gilberts? Tell them thank you. Excuse me. We come. We come on this day of Epiphany. We thank God that we are able to witness, to identify. To see that the Lord is here with us. Let us worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Arise, shine, for your light has come. We are the call of God for darkness into your light. Lift up your eyes and look around. All of them in the forest worship the Lord on high. Sorry, don't know what happened. Um, let us worship the God of light and joy and peace. We come to him. That's the last one. One more. Nope, nope. One more. There we are. Come, let us worship the God of light and joy and peace. We come to you and pray for the baby, the light of incarnate. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Glorious God, grant us the courage to follow Christ's natal star, wherever your light would lead us. Grant us the wisdom to follow the kings of old, as they left the safety of their homes to find the infant Jesus. Grant us the purity of heart to forsake the glitter of things that do not endure and embrace the brightness of your glory. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is We Three Kings. Matthew 2, 1 through 12, we hear. 
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had, he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet had written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Now let us meditate upon what happened that day as we hear the anthem by Cindy Lou Albright.
gorgeous. You wonder, with that song, From the Cradle to the Cross, being Epiphany Sunday, when did Mary realize that that baby she laid in the manger was headed for the cross? Our second gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, 1 through 5, and then 10 through 14. Beautiful words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of, as of a father's only son, full of grace, and truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Thanks. Now today is Epiphany Sunday. Epiphany is on January 6th. We come today to celebrate, and next week we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. But what is an epiphany? An epiphany is that moment that a light bulb goes off and you think, Ah, now I get it. We have small epiphanies. We have great epiphanies. For example, during this year of COVID, there were many realizations of what one's spouse may really do at work when they say they work so hard at work. One couple said they needed to name a stuffed bear Mrs. Rosenstein to sit beside a laptop so her husband could blame everything that went on that day on her. Another wife learned that her husband fell asleep every day with his hands on his keyboard, but he took a nap every day in that fashion. These little moments of, ah, oh, that's how hard you work. But then we have great realizations epiphanies, things that happen to us. A woman who was told she would never have children, who'd been gaining weight for seven months, suddenly gave birth to a baby. A man who just realized he did have the courage to serve when he ran into a burning building to save a child. A woman who was shocked to know that the Lord knew her name as he casted seven demons from her body. Now these examples are real. Two of them, I know. The last one was Mary Magdalene, who was healed of her demons and surprised that the Lord Jesus knew not just of her, but knew her by name. What a great realization that this great wise man who had been going around healing knew her by name. He called her as God's own. And her story begins in Luke 8, verse 2. After that day, she followed Jesus and the disciples, and she cared for their needs, cooking for them with other women and other people who just wanted to be near Jesus. Now, there are great things we learn about ourselves and the world and the Lord that opens our eyes to who he really is and will be for us. The wise men learned of this. They followed the star. They came from the east. These were not Jews. These were not the people who grew up hearing the scriptures, learning about the Messiah to come. But they were learned men, and they studied other cultures, other religions, 
and they had heard the prophecies. And what they found amazed them because it just surpassed all that they studied. They traveled great distance and they arrived at Bethlehem where the star rested. And they went into the house and found a child. Just like the prophecy said. But they realized he was not just a king. He was the king. And they bowed down and they worshipped him. God gave these wise men a great gift to witness the long-awaited Messiah. And they were not even the chosen people. But these men were the first to go out and witness to other nations, to the world. They took this great news back with them to their country. The wise men had a great epiphany that day. And the epiphanies did not end then. They happen every day. God gives us the things we need to know. And it may take us a while to get it. And then one day we say, oh my, I understand now. We come to understand that God does love us, just not in words. You're hearing me say words. But to really internalize that and know that God does love us. And God does know us by name. God gave us the scripture so that we could come to the realization of the power and the glory and the love that this Father has for all the children. We are also given a second reading today so that we would understand exactly who Jesus is in relationship to the Father and the Holy Spirit and to us. Imagine how God, how John must have felt when he realized who Jesus was, God incarnate. He wrote some of the most beautiful words ever written. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. How incredible to realize that the Word was God. We have read these words over the years. Every year we read them. But when did they ever sink into you? Have they yet? Have we truly understood the true meaning of God coming to earth, taking on the body of a mere infant? This great, powerful being lowering God's self to us. Who are we that we, he is mindful of us? God came, took on a human body that would feel every ounce of pain, of sacrifice, of death. God did all that to bring us home into the massive arms of love. Because God came and did that, the word came to earth, we were able to go home and be with the Father. But the word, Jesus, was always there. God did not create a son to come to earth just in that moment thinking, okay, now what? The word was always there. From the beginning, the grand design was in place where the triune form from the one and only God would be made known to humans. The scriptures told of that day and it came to pass when the word was made known to us. So what does that mean for us? Why is that so important to us today? Okay, we've heard it. Why is it important? It means that God has always had us in mind to live a life of eternity in the presence of the Almighty. We were so important to the Father from the beginning of time. Not just now. We are God's mind, body, and soul. And that's an incredible thing. You were thought of before you were conceived. God knows you. I had something happen in my life that I don't talk about a whole lot because some people just don't believe me. It took years before I even told one person. But in 2008, I had surgery that the surgeon thought went well. 
but after a few days realized that it didn't. Well, the surgeon didn't, I realized. I kept going back to the doctors. I was in so much pain, but they said I was fine. Go home, you'll heal. You just have a low tolerance for pain. And every time I went to the emergency room, they called that doctor. He said she has a low tolerance of pain. Just load her up, send her home. With each passing day, the pain became worse. Yet the doctor just told me to rest and be patient. I would heal. Now, we were supposed to go on vacation two weeks after to go to Clear Creek like we do every summer. And I convinced Whit to take the boys and go. If I was supposed to be healing, I'll just lay in bed and heal. Go ahead and go. So he left. I could not eat. I could not drink. I could not breathe. I yelled at God for not blessing me with healing. After all, the pastor came to the hospital and prayed over me. Why was I not healing? What was wrong? He could take away the pain if he wanted to, but he didn't. One morning as I lay in bed just staring, on that last morning the doctors told me that I probably would have died that day. I heard a voice. I heard Lori, and I said, I'm in here. Nothing happened. I thought it was my friend coming in to check on me like she did once in a while. And then I heard again, Lori. And I was so angry, it took every effort just to say, I'm in here. Then I heard, Lori, call your sister. She will help you. The voice was as if it was someone standing right beside my bed, yet no one was there. It was clear, determined, and it knew my name. And I said, God? And the voice said, I did not stop the pain so that you would know something was wrong. Call your sister. I said, just let me die. I'm ready. This is too, too much. Just let me die. He said, I'm not finished with you yet. Now this was before I even had the thought of going into the ministry. That whole experience of the anger and the pain and the suffering brought about the clarity that God really is with us. God does know us. And God loves us beyond measure. It was through this experience that God taught me about trust and relationship and love. Now this is Epiphany Sunday, but that day was my great Epiphany Day. There are great things to be learned from the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sustainer. Read your Bible each day as if for the first time. Look at it with fresh eyes. Learn something new that will make you say, oh, I've never seen that before. Know that Jesus was true when he said, and I will be with you always until the end of the age. Listen for the voice of our Lord in your life. God does know you, all about you, even your name. Amen. We listen to our Lord, our Lord Jesus, when he says, pray with and for each other. And we do that each and every day as we lift up the family of Hunter, the young man who committed suicide. I ask for prayers for Bob Brem as he has great anxiety when it snows and ice is over as he goes to work. For Mary, for Darcy's pain in her shoulder, for the family of Ed as they experience a season of grief, for Tom and Dana that he regains strength, for Mary, for, for Martha as she finds some relief from pain, for Jim and Jeannie as they seem to be doing okay through this time of COVID in their home. For Mary Lee Powell, a great joy is her heart rhythm is back where it should be. 
we lift up Jan Fawcett as just unsure. For Shirley Diane, who got to come home, it was looking as if it was the end, the end of her time, but she got to come home. She, she's healing. She's doing well. For Katie and Carolyn, Christy, for Carol and Marcy, and all those we continue to lift up in prayer. And always for our health care workers, first responders, for our Bishop Cynthia, for our district superintendent, who you might not know it, but they do keep constant watch over the churches, making sure that you are all getting what you need, for they do love you. I'd like to add a few more to this list. For Lynn and Dolores Corder, which uncle and aunt, as Dolores has been hospitalized with covid um, I'd like to lift up Ross and April as they experience the loss of Ross's best friend. And for Jacqueline Hamilton, she is the grandmother of my new daughter-in-law. Um, hospice has come to ease her pain as she, she waits to meet her creator. Do we have others that you would like to lift up this day concerns? Tom and Roger and family, he's back in the hospital with more seizures and another stroke. Oh my. And, uh, he went in last night. Tom Ambrosia is back in the hospital with stroke and... Not well. Not well. And the family of Bobby Case, who was 47 and died of a heart attack, few days ago. He grew up with my boys. His, his I'm wondering boys. if that's Ross's friend. I don't know his name, but he died of a heart attack and yeah. he's about that age. Yeah, Bobby Case. And it's extra hard on his father, Dave, because his, Bobby's older brother, Dave, died two years ago. In a oh, my. Patient. So, um, Dave, his father, and his brother, Brian, are naturally taking care of him. For the family, for the Case family, I think father losing two sons in two years. How devastating. Do we have others? Joan? Uh, I was sick over Christmas. I think it was just a plain old fashioned flu. But Judy insisted Chuck and I get COVID tested, and we're both negative. But also, I'd like first, I have a test on Thursday, I'd like to first. Well, we're, we're sorry you were sick, but we're glad it wasn't COVID that could have been worse. But please keep Joan in prayer for medical testing. Okay. Um, Skyler is a friend of McKenna's. And Skyler's grandmother flew to Arizona to help her pick out a wedding gown. And here um, she got COVID and passed away in Arizona. Oh. So the faith that for these young kids that they need Christ when a crisis like this happens. Yes. For Skyler and her family, and Skyler lost her grandmother to COVID. And yes, that for for everyone to realize they need they need god to get through this i don't know how they're managing without that faith system now we have some joys we do have joy in our lives and we celebrated kaylee's 12th birthday she looks like she's about 20 and i just keep squishing her every time i see her to try to put her back into little girl form we had the great joy. We had a wonderful Christmas Eve service. And the number of people who came to make that service special when we could not be together here in the church was just amazing. We lift up all January birthdays and anniversaries and a happy birthday to Jim.
out there get to see this each week? If it wasn't for Jim and Bev, I don't know what we would have done. It would be a very amateur thing on my phone, which would not be good. <laughs> so we thank Jim and wish you a happy birthday. Thank you. If you think I'm looking at you guys in the camera, I'm not. Jim's right behind you. <laughs> um, we celebrate Christ, our Savior, being born, and the faithfulness of this church. Do we have any joys? Jim, I have a joy. I thank God for walking with me today. I'm 87. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, my son-in-law. Uh, he's really come by and uh, helped us out in our need there for uh, <laughs> trying to get the bathroom back and get it together. For so he got all, everything. He did a whole new setup of electricity in the, the bathroom, put oh, lights wow. up in different places. Isn't and, it a great joy when you have someone who can do yeah. electrical work in your family? Oh yeah. I have yeah. two. I keep praying for a plumber, but <laughs> do that for me. Your Lauren son just name. name. What? What is it? Lauren. L O R E N. Lauren Steele. He works out of state all the time. So. Remember. Remember your your notebooks of joy that were passed out before Christmas. Have you been using them? I know some of you started at Christmas, and that's fine. Um, are you seeing more joys than you may have not paid attention to before? Do you see them around each corner? I, I pray that that continues, that it won't be just for a week and you put them aside. I pray that it continues. Do we have anything else that you'd like to lift up to the Lord? Let us pray. Almighty God. What a day you have given to us on this, your earth, your kingdom created for us. You gave us everything. You gave us the air to breathe, the warmth of the sun, the rain to quench the earth's thirst. You gave us your son to give us love and life. We thank you and praise your mighty name. All the power that you have, you focus on us. You call us by name. And Lord, how that takes our breath away when we realize that. We thank you for the examples of the wise men who followed a star, followed your calling, even though you were not their God at that time. They followed and they found the King, your Son, our Savior. And because of that, that one great example of realization of who Jesus truly is, we have been blessed knowing that you are here with us, that you love us and will do anything for us. So, Father God, we do come to you in prayer, and we lift up all those whom we've named before you. We pray that you will be with each one as they wait in uncertainty for Jacqueline, for Jan, for Dolores, who just, they just don't know what to expect, for those who have lost family, for the Case family, for Skylar and her family. We pray that you will be with them and hold them tightly, Lord. Father, Tom has endured so much. Now he's in the hospital again. Give him some reassurance. Help him to know what you have planned for him. 
But Lord, that is the good news for us, that we know what you have planned for us. We, we may not know when, but we know that you want us to be with you. You want us to live where you are. And we have that assurance and that gift of paradise, to return to paradise and live with you. So as we celebrate that thought, we do pray for those who mourn the loss, who are worried about their loved ones. So Lord, hold, hold us tightly in this life. And you do, you give us joys around each turn, joys of realizing who you are, joys of reading your word. We thank you for family and friends who help us, for Lauren, who is such a great help to his in-laws. We thank you for those who help in this worship service so that we may spread the word across your world. Technology is great, Lord. We do become frustrated because we don't know enough. But you're always with us. And through you, the word will, will go. It will go out about the world and shine the light of Christ. We thank you for the people in our lives, for Kaylee, for Jim and Joan. May they live as examples of your love. May they shine. So we ask that you come and be with us. Be with each one of our shuttings this day as we pray that they find a way to listen, to know that they are loved and remembered and missed. We pray that you will let them know that you are there when their family cannot be. And we come through the scriptures learning about our Lord and Savior who taught us to pray to you by saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord loves us and gives us everything. So we show that trust and return that love by giving back to the Lord. At this time we come and we give our thanks and ask blessings pour upon these, bless these gifts. If you would like to share your blessings in your life to, to help with the ministries, Christ's ministries in this world, you may do so by sending an offering to Green Oak United Methodist Church, 1213 Green Oak, Buena Vista Road, McKeesport, PA, 15135. So let us come into a time of thanksgiving. Holy God, bless these gifts that they may grow, they may spread, they may shine out in the world. Show us where to use them in this time where it's difficult to go out. Show us how. Show us the way. We thank you and we praise your name and name. Amen. Now as we Forgot that I will need this today. Can you hear me back there? Thank you. It is a time of communion. Your parts will be on the screen, and I will let you know when that you will join me 
the line up here, when you hear me say that top line. Can you just put the spurs down? Oh, yeah. Can you turn your head? Oh. I'll yell. Okay. <laughs> And then the next screen will be the mystery of our faith. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We come before the Lord and we give thanks to you, Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. For before the mountains were brought forth, you formed the earth. From everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth light on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. You sent a star to guide wise men to where the Christ was born, and in your signs and witnesses, in every age and through all the world, you have led your people from far places to his light. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, Lord, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink this, do so in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit, Lord, on each person gathered here and all those who are watching across your world. And pour your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. <clears throat> by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Though we are many, we are one in the body of Christ, broken, sacrificed on that cross. And we share in the cup of salvation, the cup that poured from the cross. If you would open the, your communion wafer. <laughs> The bread of heaven sent from above to 
give us salvation. Take and eat.